Now that we've done step one of cell respiration, which was glycolysis, and let's remember glycolysis was the process of taking glucose, splitting it into two G3P molecules, which then turned into two pyruvate molecules through the investment process and then the payoff process, we're going to now take those pyruvate molecules and oxidize them. And this next step, step two, let's say, of cellular respiration is called pyruvate oxidation. It's sort of an intermediate step before you have any major sort of uh, changes in the overall chemical, let's say, reaction of cellular respiration, but it's an important step because it creates an important compound that we'll look at as we go through the process. So pyruvate oxidation, again, an important thing that you want to do whenever you're looking at any of these steps of cell respiration and something that the exams always ask about is where things are occurring. So where did the glycolysis occur? Glycolysis occurred in the cytosol of a cell. This is actually going to be changing the location of where, let's say, the respiration is occurring. This time we're actually moving to the mitochondrion. That's actually the um, singular of mitochondria. Mitochondria is actually plural. This is the singular, mitochondrion. And we can just say um, we're going from cytosol, just to remind ourselves where we started, um, to the mitochondrion. And what's coming from to where? Uh, we have pyruvate in the cytosol made from glycolysis coming to the mitochondrion. One thing you want to understand about the mitochondrion is its structure. It's a double membrane. Every mitochondria is a double membrane. And also it has um, cristae. Mitochondrion has cristae. When we have a double membrane, that means you have an outer membrane and an inner membrane. I know it seems obvious, but you have to really understand where things are occurring and you have to sort of look at a figure at least of the mitochondrion so that you can see both the inner membrane and the outer membrane so that you can figure out where you have one of the most important parts, the intermembrane space. This is the space in between the inner and outer membrane and this is a space where a lot of things are going to be occurring and also the inner membrane of the mitochondrion is a space that you should remember. These two places, intermembrane space and intermembrane space, are going to be important uh, for several different roles within the cell respiration that we see. Criste is just another way to say folds within the mitochondrion, and this is just an attempt of the mitochondrion to increase its surface area. Because remember, that's one of the themes of biology and sort of life itself, is to increase the surface area to volume ratio. If you have tons of folds, your brain actually has a lot of folds, your digestive system has a lot of folds and extensions. Those types of things are going to increase surface area. That's what the mitochondrion criste are. Criste are just folds within the mitochondria to increase surface area. So now we have an understanding of where we are in the cell. We're at the mitochondrion, um, and now we're going to look at the actual process. So let's look at um, pyruvate from glycolysis. What happens to this? What is the uh, sort of result of this? So we have pyruvate, and it comes from glycolysis. And some things are going to happen to it now in this next step. The pyruvate from glycolysis is going to have to first travel. It's going to have to travel from cytosol, to where? It has to travel to mitochondria. So I'll write to mito. But this process is not as easy as it sounds. Um, at first, all it has to do is diffuse. And specifically, it diffuses um, into um, outer membrane of the mitochondrion. So remember, there's two membranes. So it has no problem going from cytosol to the outer membrane or through the outer membrane. But then it has a problem when it has to get to the next part, when it has to get um, into the mitochondrial matrix. And what we basically mean is that we have to undergo active transport um, into the inner membrane. And specifically, the part of the inner membrane that we want to get to um, is known as the mitochondrial matrix. Um, one last two points I want to make about this active transport. Let's just remember active transport um, needs metabolic energy. So we'll write met energy. It's not a process that's going to happen on its own. You need to input a little bit of energy. And you actually also need a protein in this situation. You need a membrane protein that's going to help facilitate this diffusing, or not this diffusing, this transport into the inner membrane. So you have this pyruvate molecule that you've made from glycolysis. You want to take it from the cytosol to the mitochondria. Specifically, you have to first get through the outer membrane. You've done that. You've diffused through it. It's very easy. 
Next, you have to get into the inner membrane space, the mitochondrial matrix, we call it. You have to use active transport, and you have to use a membrane protein and metabolic energy in order to get into the inner membrane that we labeled. And finally, um, the end-all, be-all is that you get into the mitochondrial matrix. So the pyruvate gets into, we'll call it mitomatrix. From this point forward, we'll just probably call it double M, MM. Um, this is an important part of cell respiration. This is an important location of many, many facts and many different reactions that we're going to be seeing, specifically pyruvate oxidation, the process itself. So let's look at um, this idea of pyruvate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate dehydrogenase is one of the most amazing enzymes in the world. It's one of the most complicated enzymes in the world. We remember um, structure of proteins. And remember, enzymes are proteins. This is an enzyme because it ends in ACE. You can tell that immediately. But specifically, this enzyme is amazing because it's actually 72 polypeptide chains. 72. If you remember when we were talking about quaternary structure, remember pr proteins can be primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary? We talked about a quaternary protein that was hemoglobin. It was four polypeptide chains. This pyruvate dehydrogenase, it's called pyruvate dehydrogenase, and more specifically, a pyruvate dehydrogenase complex is 72 polypeptide chains um, which make a quaternary structure. So that just goes to show you the massiveness of this protein. It's a massive protein that undergoes this, the following process. So we'll write the process. And what we mean by the process is we're going to take pyruvate and we're going to oxidize it. We're going to cause some changes to happen to it. First and foremost, what happens is that we have um, pyruvate. Uh, and what we're going to do is the pyruvate carboxyl group. If we remember, a carboxyl group is a, I'm going to write this on the top over here, C double O H. This is a carboxyl group. The pyruvate molecule from glycolysis has a carboxyl group, which is removed. Carboxyl group removed. So I would underline carboxyl removed um, via, and it's called oxidative, all right, ox decarboxylation. So again, these are some details you don't absolutely need to remember, but just understand that the first part of this pyruvate dehydrogenase's job is to remove a carboxyl group from the pyruvate via oxidative decarboxylation reaction. This is something you should definitely remember. The end result is when you remove a carboxyl group, anytime you remove a carboxyl group through a decarboxylase enzyme, you release CO2. CO2 is released. And now we're actually starting to see for the first time, um, some of our products from our cell respiration overall equation. Because remember, we breathe in C we breathe in oxygen and then we release CO2. We actually are seeing CO2 being released for the first time. And remember, we have pyruvate, but we have two pyruvate molecules because it happened. To, uh, glycolysis was splitting one molecule of glucose into two pyruvates, so there's going to be CO2 released once, and then again, because there's going to be the exact same thing happening twice. In addition, the next step would be um, a dehydrogenase step, where we have NAD plus um, being reduced. And we know now that NAD plus, whenever it's reduced, reduction is gain. Remember, oil rig? We have NAD plus turning into what? So NAD plus turns into NADH. That's our next step. Um, also, what we do is we add a coenzyme, and specifically add coenzyme A. Once we've removed the carboxyl, um, we actually call pyruvate now acetate. But what we're going to now say is that we add a coenzyme A. Once we've removed the carboxyl, we can then add a coenzyme A to that acetate molecule. And this coenzyme A is a sort of like the idea of B vitamins uh, are important here. And coenzyme A is also has a sulfur atom. You always see B vitamins being responsible for energy a lot. People say B vitamins are good for your energy, helping you have a high level of energy. This is why. B vitamins are all over cell respiration. Cell respiration's product is energy. If you increase your B vitamins, if you increase your coenzymes that are B vitamins also, you're helping out your body by helping it produce more energy. That's why B vitamins give you energy. Very simple, very applicable. And overall, the last thing that we see here is the acetyl coenzyme A itself molecule. Once we've attached a coenzyme A to acetate, we've created acetyl coenzyme A. This is our end product. This is what we wanted. 
So overall, we can say pyruvate from glycolysis through pyruvate dehydrogenase turns into acetyl coenzyme A in pyruvate oxidation. And we can quickly just summarize this whole process. I'll do that very quickly and very briefly here. Again, I want you to remember where this is occurring. It's occurring in the mitochondria, but this overall specific, the nitty-gritty of this is actually occurring at the mitochondrial matrix, MM. And our overall equation we can use for this process that we've talked about is two pyruvate molecules. Why are there two? Because glucose splits into two pyruvate molecules. Every one glucose molecule turns into two pyruvate. We also have two NAD+, and we also have two coenzyme A molecules turning into our products of two acetyl coenzyme A molecules. This was our most important thing that we needed, and we've made it right here. Um, two NADH molecules. Again, uh, I'm going to sort of save the idea and purpose of these NADH molecules for a little bit later, why we're making them. Because remember, we actually made them in glycolysis as well, and they showed up again. And then also for the first time, we make two CO2 molecules. CO2 molecules and let's remember, these are released. This is what we breathe out. This is why we breathe out, part of the reason why we breathe out carbon dioxide, part of the reason carbon dioxide is a product of cell respiration. So overall, step two of, of cellular respiration is pyruvate oxidation, and it immediately follows glycolysis. It's the idea of taking pyruvate from the cytosol, putting it into the mitochondria, undergoing these changes through the pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme to give us overall two acetyl coenzyme A molecules.